Hi, my name is Shady Atia. I'm Assistant Professor of Sustainable Architecture and Building Technology at Liège University in Belgium. And I would like to share with you today my book review. It's my most recent book published uh, this year. And the title of the book is Net Zero Energy Building. And it's looking at concepts, frameworks, and roadmap for uh, project uh, analysis and implementation. Well, in this presentation, I will explore with you the content of the book in a brief way so that you can have an idea and decide if you would like be interested to read the book, which I invite you to do. Well, the most important keywords in this book are related to energy neutrality. This is the main aim uh, that the book is positioned to address in relation to buildings, high performance buildings, well-being, indoor environmental quality, ultra efficient systems, green materials, occupant behavior, smartness and grids, cost effect effectiveness and the book is also focused on more specific keywords such as multidisciplinarity or the multidisciplinary approach the integrated process design climate sensitivity comfort requirement uh, requirements uh, carbon footprint construction quality contracts and cost evidence based design those are specific terms related to the book, co book content well Zero Energy Building, what is it about? The book is based on learned lessons from net zero energy building design, construction and operation. And it is not a surprise that there are already existing books related to this subject matter, but most of these books are focused on the design phase and very few books focused on the construction phase and the operation. And that's the strength of the book, that it's looking from a holistic approach, starting uh, with the design phase and then focusing a lot on learned lessons from practice during operation and during construction. The book is positioned within the smart grid paradigm, a paradigm that is forcing today itself in most, and all, uh, uh, most uh, industrial countries. Uh, the book covers the performance thresholds for efficient buildings uh, and automation, uh, topics related to microgrids, uh, grid connectivity, the internet of things, uh, controls and so on and therefore it's interesting that the book was written with this paradigm taking into account the relation with mobility taking into account the relation with grid and the interaction and the access to smart and connected devices in our new buildings that we built today the book presents real world case studies uh, that are uh, zero energy buildings with a focus on public uh, commercial and schools and factories and residential buildings we have also a fifth case studies uh, related to factories uh, so we have four or five we have four uh, different typologies schools uh, housing uh, factories factories also becoming today a part of the challenge to uh, carbon uh, reduction of carbon and energy neutrality and therefore the book is distilling this knowledge from these real cases and it's also looking at the learned lessons after the buildings were operated for at least three to five uh, years the book focuses on practical issues that are relevant to building professionals without uh, an in-depth knowledge related to high performance building so it can be very useful for people who are tapping in in this new world of high performance buildings uh, contractors uh, designers policy makers academics uh, engineers and therefore the book was written to take people from the beginning to the level of expertise a high level of expertise uh, if we look at the reality of today we had one of the most important catastrophes in the last 10 years was the fukushima accident in 2011 and I'm sharing with you this diagram just to show you what did Japan after the Fukushima and the nuclear uh, uh, power uh, accident that happened. We can see that in, nine, in 2010, almost uh, the percentage of nuclear energy in Japan was almost 30%. Today, in 2018, it is almost 1%, which means that the nuclear power and the industry of nuclear uh, energy generation is phasing out. And this is a wise decision to go uh, in the coming years to continue in this uh, uh, path. The other issue that is, or the other t t issue that we are facing, that uh, the oil and gas sector is also declining. Whatever we are trying to produce on the world uh, level, at the end of the day, renewables are gaining momentum, and we are looking to uh, uh, reduce our uh, carbon emissions worldwide. And we are also unable today to pay 
the consequences associated for with uh, as, uh, with fossil fuel we are facing in many countries uh, earthquakes uh, damages environmental pollution and issues and these environmental issues are now in the upstreams and most companies are denying their responsibility with for what happened in the last 30 40 years and this means also that it's not wise to continue in this direction the third and the most important challenge that we are all facing in the planet regardless of which country we are in and this was the Cl paris agreement in 2015 it is the climate change challenge it's a very serious challenge we have alteration in the climate worldwide we have more extreme climate we have magnification of cer certain phenomena desertification uh, change of climate uh, reduction of biodiversity and so on and what we are trying to do in the coming years to reduce our emissions on the planet by controlling the emissions coming from the built environment and the target that we are focusing worldwide today is to keep the temperature below 2 Celsius uh, and we hope that we succeed in that and the book is written within this uh, uh, context and trying to reflect on what's happening after the oil and gas uh, post oil and gas uh, era and what's happening after we phase out nuclear and how we can have energy neutral energy independent robust uh, uh, high performance buildings that are uh, able to generate comfort living and working environment conditions and in the same time uh, have a positive or even neutral impact on the environment well i did not explain before the slides what are net zero energy buildings but simply net zero energy buildings are energy neutral buildings over a period of one year and those buildings are grid connected they are connected to the grid and they neutralize their consumption over the year uh, by integrating on-site renewables sometimes some project will do it through off-site green energy but in the definition of net zero energy buildings that we find across europe for example you'll find at least a percentage of generation on site so the definition is mainly looking at breaking down the energy consumption for lighting equipment cooling pumps fans heating cooling uh, hot water and so on and we use the in the uh, a very important indicator that is now uh, used worldwide it's the energy use intensity index and it's very helpful to balance or quantify the consumption to be able later on to balance this consumption and if we like look at this simple equation we see what the building consumes over a year divided by the gross building area then we can estimate this the site energy use intensity then we size and position and select our renewables to meet this energy use over a year to have at the end a net zero energy consumption over a year and this is what is the book about how to design those buildings how to construct them how to operate them well the content of the book it is based on 12 chapters uh, we can start having the first chapter it's the introduction chapter it's talking about the market accelerators and how the market today is demanding net zero energy building and all the finally we wrap up the book with the roadmap for net zero energy building talking about implementation how we can implement net zero energy building in the context of industrial countries and also in the context of non-industrial countries we are offering two different roadmaps setting targets setting visions milestones what should be done in countries with a strong industrial infrastructure what should be done with lower or weaker uh, industrial infrastructure and we share the learned lessons in the last chapter so this is regarding the table of content of the book and you can have a look in detail on the website when you google uh, the book a little word about me i am a assistant professor at liege university i'm uh, responsible for uh, i am a professor of sustainable architecture and building technology i have experience with several projects uh, that are lead rated green building certified and i've been uh, working in the last uh, three years in the university doing research in this area and i'm also published a book uh, uh, to uh, uh, talking entitled regenerative architecture and positive impact uh, architecture well the book offers a roadmap for engaging for engaging in energy efficiency in high performance uh, building projects so i'm inviting you to uh, have a look at the book the book combines solid grounding and core concept of energy balance load management with a wider context that includes uh, technical systems it's looking at batteries we are talking about 
uh, heat pumps, we are talking about uh, heat exchanger, mechanical ventilation, uh, gas fired systems, we are looking at automation, we are looking at the smart control, uh, we are looking at about the connectivity and the protocols between them. So the book is also bringing a lot of insights for mechanical engineers on this in this area and is discussing mainly state of the art uh, uh, systems, hydroponic systems, uh, air based systems, uh, ground source heating, thermal activated uh, slabs and so on. And also we are discussing in the book the influence factors on cost. We are comparing based on the case studies different technologies and what can keep the cost of a building as low as possible. We're looking at the influence of construction technology and the selection of the construction system and how can make the price actually go down even cheaper than traditional buildings. The influence of envelope design, construction and structural systems, HVAC and re renewable energy systems, the project delivery type and it's important as you can see the project delivery type is the most a sensitive parameter that can make the project more expensive or less expensive. So all these factors are discussed in chapter 9. And the essence is of the book is that I'm trying to share with you the essence that we came after writing the book over the last five years. This book started maybe more than five years. I started the book in 2011. And as you can see in this diagram, the book is positioned not only in the context of a net zero energy building that is independent. Today the paradigm uh, 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 the, 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 the smartness paradigm and the sustainability paradigm is setting up in a different context. We are talking about buildings that are ne energy neutrals, neutral. We are looking at a paradigm that is trying to get focus on cities that are most and most of the time the highest urbanized areas in, on planet cities where we have zero carbon vehicles coupled to smart and decarbonized grids. And this means that between buildings, transportation mobility, and grids, we will need to have always a new thing we will not use to, which is storage. So the book is also exploring this and putting learned lesson related to this changing paradigm and how we will have a new built environment that is based on smart control, that is based on automated control, microgrid, and everything is connected and every element of those is related to decarbonizing the grid from a level of a city scale to the level of building scale and how to create the exchange and guarantee robust supply of energy and in the same time uh, guarantee comfort condition and that user will profit uh, at the end and enjoy their buildings. The book looks at uh, different aspects uh, related to net zero energy building. It's providing a logical framework to analyze project in the context of environmental change and this is one of the main benefits for readers and it presents worldwide examples and cases for different climates, typologies, like I explained, we have five different typologies and societies. Where to find the book? The book is available, the publisher is Elsevier, so you can find it on the Elsevier or order it on Elsevier website. You can find it also on Amazon or any similar website and it's uh, available worldwide. And finally, I invite you to read the book. Uh, recommend the book in uh, your own library, in the library of your office, in the library of your university. And if you have any opportunity to engage via comment in this video, don't hesitate to do it. I invite you again to read the book. The book is the title is Net Zero Energy Buildings, Concepts, Frameworks and Roadmap for Project Analysis and Implementation. Thank you very much for your attention.